Hello and welcome to part two of this video on building the foundry. So in this video we will do the refractory side of the foundry, putting it in the, the top and putting refractory in the main body of the foundry as well. So I've done a little bit of googling around and um, I mean there's a whole bunch of different recipes for the refractory. Some of them use a kale wool as well but I think that's a little bit hard to come by for us so I went and bought some perlite and Portland cement. I was looking at one of the YouTube videos uh, Richard from making something for nothing so on his foundry he just used uh, this perlite and some Portland cement 60% uh, perlite and 40% cement and mix it up with some water, uh, got to be a dry mix, and then just, um, you know, push it all in and it will uh, set in there. He apparently has done a lot of firings and hasn't had any issues with it, so that's what we're going to start with on this one anyway. So instead of just working out the uh, diameter here minus the square in the middle, and of course it's curved, it would be a lot easier just to pour the perlite in here and then I know how much I need. And then I have to convert that to, um, I guess, cups, so I can put it in a container and work out how many cups are in there. And then once I've got uh, that number of cups of perlite that we need for the top, uh, then I can work out what the cement mix will be with that. And then we'll start making it up. So there were about 13 cups of perlite, so that means I need around about 8.5 cups of the uh, Portland cement. So now I believe you just uh, mix it together, I might put it back into the other container, just put that respirator back on. So I believe this is the right consistency, it's quite dry, I think that's what they recommend. I don't think they, I don't think you should be putting too much moisture in there um, and if it's drier it makes it easier to dry out and less chance of cracking apparently. So anyway let's, uh, let's go with that. You saw earlier in the video I used the wire brush in here and uh, cleaned all the loose welding spatter and all that sort of stuff off just so there's solid surface for this to stick to. We've got the rebar in there as well so that should be fine. Alright, I think I'm going to just leave it at that. First one I've done, so really not sure what else to do. I've tried to flatten it off and let's just hope she's flat enough. So now we're going to do the refractory inside the main unit. So I'm going to do what I did last time and pour in some perlite to work out the level. I'll put a little bit extra in this time. Well, last time I put it a little bit extra in but it wasn't enough so maybe a little bit extra extra The refractory mix inside has set. It's hard now, of course it will need some more time to dry out properly. I found a, um, a rubbish bin inside that we didn't use and the uh, diameter here is 200 millimeters which is absolutely perfect because 
this is a 300 millimeter tank and that gives me 50 millimeters each side for the installation to go in there so the next step is to put a hole in here above the refractory that I've got set in there for the burner and I think we'll go a little bit bigger than this and then that should work as the same sort of principle as the nozzle well I hope it works so that's just above 190 it's about 193 millimeters so if I go down to 190 that'll give me three millimeters above the, the floor now I've just got to line up how that works with the um, this inside piece of steel here so that uh, the hole goes into this and you know on on an angle in the side here um, and we're not too far on the outside so we need to be in here with um, a, still the steel on the outside there I think I'm ready to mix up the refractory and put it in for the outside of the uh, main part of the furnace here. As I mentioned before, I've got, I found a rubbish bin which is the right size. I made up a piece of wood on the bottom that uh, fits in there tight. Um, and I've actually cut it a little bit in here and also a little bit just on this surface as well. So when I come to remove it, all I need to do is just cut within this sort of rectangle inside here, if you can see that on the camera. I've got a small circle there which lines up with the small circle here. Um, and of course I've got the cutaway for the pipe that will go through there. I do use a 42 millimeter pipe because uh, that's all I had. So I presume it would still, still work fine. So we line up the centre of the uh, inner bin with a circle on the refractory on the bottom. We can put our um, pipe in here. And what I'll do is hot glue that pipe in so it seals uh, on the inside here and on the outside of the tank there. And then I've got uh, these two pieces that go in the top. So the tin's pretty, pretty firm, uh, but I think without these pieces of wood, uh, you know, when you're compacting the refractory, it might sort of push it a little bit. So I think it needs these supports. And basically there's a lip at the top here and these fit under the lip. And um, I'm not going to try and put this in now because I don't think it will fit in, but they fit in there quite nice and tight so uh, I can see through the center there because I've put a hole in there to make sure we're lined up down the middle and then uh, basically I guess you just make up your refractory and, and put it in there and compact it down um, I'm not going to make any braces or anything for here I think what I'll do is just keep the center lined up and then once it's finished and up to the top level, I will um, put something heavy on the top here to hold it down. Uh, and then overnight that should set. So that's the plan. So uh, I'll try and get that going. Okay, well I've got the inside um, container in here now. I actually put a couple of drops of uh, hot glue on the bottom and that's stuck pretty firm. Um, also I've uh, put hot glue around the pipe and hopefully I'll be able to break that off uh, by just twisting the pipe when time comes to remove everything. Anyway I've seen people, the pipe's usually pretty easy to get out, they just put a big um, monkey wrench on there and just twist it and it seems to break all the hot glue off and comes out easy. I just hope I'm not setting myself up for a whole lot of hurt trying to get this thing out once it's set. But anyway, we'll um, see how we go with that. So I've got the uh, the two halves on the top here, so that all worked in good. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is 
I wrapped round, we call it glad wrap here in New Zealand. It's, you know, that clear clingy stuff that the teenagers, you know, stick on toilet seats at parties, that, that type of thing. So I wrap that around the inner tube here and hopefully the refractory will stick to the glad wrap and I'll be able to pull these centers out and hopefully the bottom one and then collapse this metal tube inwards to be able to get it out. If I don't have the glab wrap on there, then the refractory will stick to the metal and I think that's where it becomes problematic when trying to remove these things. Okay, so I've put the refractory in and let's hope that all works well and let's hope I can get that centerpiece out. So you might have seen the first batch, it was a little bit wet. Uh, I started off dry but I was trying to get around that pipe at the bottom underneath but it was a bit too dry for that I think. So I wetted it a bit and I think I wetted it a bit too much. So I hope that doesn't cause any issues, maybe I just need to let it dry for a bit longer. Uh, the top batch or the second batch was a lot better and you can see I've just floated it to the uh, the water to the top now so give it a few knocks on the ground like that and the refractory is slightly above the edge of the outside uh, edge of the tank so I did the same with the lid and I just sort of milled off um, you know the next day it's not hard as rock or anything so I sort of just milled it off with a very coarse rasp to get it nice and flat again uh, so that worked out quite good so I've done the same here and if any bits chip off on the edges um, hopefully that's higher than where we need it and they'll be um, sort of removed anyway okay so I'll let that dry and I'll come back tomorrow and try and get that centerpiece out tell you what I did not expect that to come out so easily that uh, glab wrap I wrapped around the metal form in the middle really worked fabulous the refractory um, stuck to that you can see some of it's still inside the main body here but it didn't stick to the metal canister and I think that's just saved me a lot of time and effort trying to get that metal canister out that just came out couple of taps around the side and just lift it out it's just amazing so that's um you know maybe something other people can look into when they're making one of these foundries i'm going to flatten out the top the same way that i uh, flattened out the the lid and then hopefully the um the lid will fit nicely flat on there and you know pretty much seal it as best as it can for a concrete to concrete seal Okay, so I flattened that off at the top there and that came out really good. Took a little while, I did the top the other day, so this is the top and I used a very coarse kind of rasp type of file on the top um, and that took quite a while but 
the base here, I used some coarse sandpaper and gun stapled it to a, a piece of wood, uh, straight wood. So I was able to get right across the whole cylinder and get it level. So you can see there, um, it's actually a pretty good fit all the way around there. So I think that's going to work out pretty well. All right, so I think the next step is to work out how we're going to mount the burner here. So I saw in Prezzo's video that he welded a bracket, a round cylinder type bracket, to the wear bar here. And that worked out pretty good. Uh, he made up this round kind of tube thing um, so that the burner would just slide into it. I think that was so that if anything went wrong, he could just slide it out quickly, um, uh, you know, for safety. So I think I'm going to do something very similar to that. Um, I'll have to see what I've got and either have some pipe that this will slide into and then weld a bracket onto here. Or if I don't have that, I might have to do what Prezzo did. And I think he turned something up on the lathe uh, to suit this application. Okay, I finished making the attachment for the burner. So I found a bit of um, pipe that was a bit bigger than the burner. It, it fits in here not too bad. There's a little bit of wobble there, but I don't think that's going to cause much of an issue. Uh, I've mounted in two places. So I welded this bracket onto the pipe, and then I've uh, made a mistake here actually to begin with. I drilled a hole right through, put a bolt in, and bolted it on. Um, and then that was fine, but then I realized later that when I put the lid on and the bar comes down the center, there's now a bolt through the center. So uh, I had to backtrack on that and um, come up with a different design. So I've got a 3mm plate here, and I've welded this bolt into the 3mm plate, and then I've welded the 3mm plate onto the square section. And that way this bracket can go... Uh, through the bolt and be bolted on. Uh, down the bottom there's a plate that sort of runs along the length here. The reason why is because the burner comes out and you know if it gets knocked or it's kind of a long distance there so you know if there's any issues where it's trying to bend this tube up or down or, or sideways then you know this is quite strong so that will stop that happening. And that's bolted down the bottom there as well. So that works out pretty good. Now, I had to cut the hole in here at 42 millimeters because that's the only pipe that I had when I was putting the refractory cement in. Um, so there is a gap around there now. I've put the burner in here and it seems to run fine. I've only run it in very short bursts uh, because I'm you know waiting for the refractory to dry out and I don't want to heat it up too hot. Um, so it seems to work fine, but I think the advantage here is if I do go with a bigger burner um, in the future, this bracket is removable and I can make up another bracket with a bigger diameter pipe that will fit in the hole here as well. So I'll be able to, um, you know, upgrade to a bigger burner if I need to pretty easily. So the burner just uh, goes in the hole here. You can see I've put some marks on from the little test that I've done. Um, you know, it's kind of only up to this point here. And then I think where the one is, that takes it to about here. And then where the three is, that takes it right to the inside edge. Uh, and that seems to run fine uh, in that position. So that might be where I, where I have it. Um, I wasn't going to bolt it or clamp it. Um, I have to see how it performs when you know we're running the foundry and if there's any vibrations or anything. I think it's going to just sit there pretty solid so I don't think we're going to have any issues. If anything goes wrong I can just take it out quickly so that's kind of the same design that um, 
Prezo had in his foundry, so it makes sense. So I think the next step is to just take the tank off, clean it up, uh, get it painted, clean the frame up and get that painted as well. Uh, this is the paint that I purchased from uh, Super Cheap Autos. So it says it will do 1093 degrees Celsius or 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's the highest temperature paint that I could find. So we'll try that out and see how we go. Ah, so I haven't actually painted the foot pedal yet, so I'll go ahead and get that painted up and then we'll um, put that on. So a bit of a change of plan here, I didn't want to have to wait for this thing to get painted and uh, dried and undercoated and top coated, so what I did is I just hot glued it and uh, we can put it on straight away. Um, the other thing is it is a moving part, so it's probably better to be hot glued anyway. So I'll chuck that on and then um, that should be pretty much done. Okay, so I've got the foundry all painted up and complete. So that's the heat resistant paint on the foundry itself, on the gas bottle. And just use some normal um, spray paint for the frame. Uh, as I mentioned before, I just blued the foot pedal just so that I could get that done and didn't have to wait for undercoat and top coats and all that stuff to dry. But that all, um, that all works pretty good. As you saw in the earlier video, um, that's all the refractory in there. That came up pretty good. It's all leveled off. And the lid just swings back and fits down perfectly. And then that is pretty much locked solid there. So that's not going to slide open for any any reason. Now, stability wise, with the refractory in the cylinder, that is pretty heavy at the front now. So I'm not worried about anything flipping over backwards. And to be honest, um, sideways is pretty is pretty good as well. So the, uh, the burner that I've got, just um, as you know, plugs in down here. And I'm, I've just got some marks on here at the moment to different positions and working out where the best place for that is. But I mean, that could go right in if I needed to, or you know, we could just go um, up to that first line. I've just sort of fired up a couple of quick burns i didn't want to burn it too much because i was waiting for the refractory to dry up but that has been in there for probably about six days now so it's probably pretty dry um so this weekend we'll be trying it out making some videos and that will be in part three
So as usual, thanks for watching.